I spoke with Critical Role's Travis Willingham about being healthy and how that's influenced his professional and his personal life. Did you ever have a point where you didn't work out a whole bunch? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you know, it's... How was elementary? <laughs> elementary school? <laughs> yeah, man, they didn't have they didn't have those clang and bang weights back at yeah. <laughs> Lakewood Elementary. You, well, they, they had the big tires, though. You could just... Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gravel pole with the tires. What is that? Oh my God! Tire what flips. What is old Travis doing? Yeah. <laughs> he's got a he's got a thing. He's got a whole bunch of he's got a whole bunch of <laughs> jump ropes tied together. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, it was. You know, I I was uh, I was more of an endurance athlete until like later in in high school when my growth I grew like six inches in a summer, um, which changed my athletic perspective a lot. So I was like a swimmer most of my life. Got really tall, and then the you know basketball and football coaches were like, "Come here, you go hit people. You're bigger than them." So that yeah. that became really fun. Um, but after after college and playing a little bit, you know, I did like triathlons and things that you know where size was a hindrance, right? Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to push it and see if I could go from being like 240 back down to like 210, 208. I think was the the lowest I ever got. Um, and that was great. And I did a half Ironman and it was grueling and all those things. And then I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm going to put on some more weight. So, you know, I did my little, <laughs> my little Renee Zellweger thing and like gained a lot of muscle and then dropped a lot of muscle and then gained a lot of muscle. Um, and I just feel, I feel better kind of in this place where I feel like I can, I can move heavy things. And plus it takes less time to work out. Right. You know, you go into an hour in a gym. Great. You know, versus three hours on a bike where you're like, Oh my God, where's the time for that? Um, but I think people get the misconception, uh, especially with Joe and myself. I cannot speak for Joe, but I would assume it's the same for everybody that, you know, we're like always working out. It's not true. Like we tell people that are trying to make changes in their life from a fitness perspective. I'm like, it, it's just about making the change and then sticking with it and carrying that momentum forward. And if it breaks and it breaks for like a few months and you have a time off, that's totally fine. You just got to find a time to go like, okay, I'm starting again and then recommit to it. You know, Laura and I are like expecting in July. And I can say that the last two, two and a half months, like I didn't see the inside of a gym at all, right? And right. the tanks game came up and Joe's like, yo, bro, I am fucking training for this game. And I was like, <laughs> damn it. All right, fine. So like the last three weeks, it's just been then. And they're like trying to, you know, <laughs> lift really hard, make up for it. You're like the guy that hasn't brushed his teeth for a year and then he's going to the dentist the, you know, that morning. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flossing, you know. <laughs> Job yeah, head. totally. So it's been a little off and on, but uh, yeah. What do, what do you like about staying fit? I know this is like definitely going into the beyond of D and D. Beyond. No, it's great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I said this uh, once at a, a WonderCon panel. Like, I just feel like I'm the best, like the best version of myself when I'm working out. I think there's such a uh, people talk about the runner's high. Like when I would when I would train and do high endurance stuff. Um, when you come back in for a run, you get this endorphin release and you feel really good and. That's a physical thing, but it's also a mental thing because you know, for me, I knew that I had done something that day to put myself in a healthier place, right? So no matter what, the, what happened in that day, whether I was successful in work stuff or if it didn't go well, at least I had that small win, right? I had done something to better myself that day. Um, and I realized what an edge that gave me. When there are consecutive days or consecutive weeks or even months where I haven't been in the gym... I'll kind of get like this kind of bummer vibe where I'm like, man, I don't feel like I've been doing as much as I can to make myself better, like the, the better version of myself. Yeah. Um, and the longer that that goes on, the more I'm like, I feel the need to go back into the gym, you know, and you, you'll do the work and you're sore and you're like, oh, but even when you're sore and things hurt, it's that reminder of like, yeah, but I did that work that day, right? I've, I've tried to make myself better in that moment and I feel, I feel good about that that part and I feel like that's something that people don't quite understand sometimes they look at the gym and they're like oh there's all these people and I'm intimidated and I don't feel like I belong and people are judging me and like yeah that's true and even if you are nervous about going in and working out and doing those things if you go and you do a workout whether it's short or long you can go home with the satisfaction and the pride of knowing that you did it right and you should if you repeat that feeling every day I feel like that does something, right? And your your neurons start to connect these new pathways. And it's like, yeah, this is this is your new normal, and you're doing things to help yourself. And I think it's undervalued that the the value that or the the act of working out and taking care of yourself, what that actually does to you. So for me, it's just important because otherwise, I feel like I'm not 
taking care of myself and working as hard as I should to, to make myself as good as possible. And has that added to your acting? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really has because... You know, a lot of people ask, like, how do I get into voice acting, right? Or, you know, how do I get into acting in Los Angeles and I live in, you know, Minnesota? What do I do? Um, and a lot of it is like, well, we can tell you things like take classes and move to L.A. But it's a lot of hard answers that people don't want to hear sometimes, which is like, if you wanted to be a doctor, you got to go to medical school. And if you can't afford it, you got to find a way to afford it, right? you got to work. Um, and a lot of people don't want to do the work, right? They're looking for like the, the quick fix or maybe the connection or, you know, something that saves them a little bit of time. And, um, I learned in act, it, it applies to acting that if you're not working on accents as a voice actor, or if you're not doing, practicing your cold reading, or if you're not analyzing performances from other actors that you enjoy, right? Like what about, what about their read is something that maybe I'm not doing? Are they being more subtle? Are they, you know, projecting as hard as I am? Are they, are their reads faster tempo wise? If you're not doing that stuff and really digging in and doing the work that can sometimes be boring and frankly, like lonely, because you're doing it by yourself, then you're probably not going to get to where you want to go. But if every day you're doing something to get yourself closer to that goal, then you'll have a pretty good headspace about knowing that, yeah, I did the work. And so when that moment comes, when it's, you know, whether you're a jock spocking in a game and your muscles need to be big because you're on the stage with like some of the gnarliest looking <laughs> dudes you've ever seen, or you're in, a, in an audition for like a, you know, a network cartoon show or a video game and they ask you to do some accent that you're not prepared for, you're ready, right? And if you haven't prepared up to that point, then, you know, good luck. I hope where you are is enough. But if you've been doing that, that small stuff every day, you'll be in a better position to succeed. Thank you, Travis, for again being on D&D Beyond. I'm Todd Kenrick, your host. Thank you so much for watching.